Welcome to Miracles Today. I am Sister Caroline. I invite you to join my husband, Pastor Joshua Owens, and myself for Miracles Today. Let's join in to today's program. Hey everybody, what's going on? So happy to be with you today. This is Brother Josh and Sister Caroline. And then I got Mr. Jeff on the other side <laughs> over there. Uh, we're so, so grateful to be here. Uh, I look forward to this week, every um, week, weekend, or this day, <laughs> rather. Uh, let me restate that. I look forward to this Wednesday. Why do I look forward to it? Because it's, uh, one, it's just open fellowship. It's not recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, it's live. And uh, I love just kind of following the way God leads. It's always exciting. It's fresh. It's new. Uh, before we get in today's uh, message and the things we're going to kind of talk about, we want to encourage everyone to continue to visit our website, MostHopeDeliverance.com. If you know anybody struggling with spiritual oppression or sick uh, that's looking for healing, have them reach out. God is eager, and He is in the healing business. He doesn't want to give you a Band-Aid for your problem. He wants to be your problem solver. Uh, also, we want to encourage you to check out our prison ministry book funds. Uh, what that is, is we're raising money to put books inside institutions for inmates. And it's a really gay, great uh, uh, program there that we've kind of took over because uh, so far we've been able to put, I think, 384 books yeah. inside institutions. So that's really great. Uh, and then let me say a couple other things before we begin for our listeners. Uh, so glad you're here. We want to share something today with you that's going to change your life. Why is it going to change your life? Because it's the practical application of God's Word. It's uh, the reality that, hey, we as Christians, we face opposition, we face trials and tribulations. Uh, but we need to really learn what the Word says so we can apply it properly within our life so we can achieve complete success and victory as the word says if you're in the tri-state area and you're around uh, amelia uh, there's a good church out there but uh, pastor dan cook mount holly uh, christian chapel they actually have a service every wednesday at noon i just found that out today and i wanted to share that because uh Dan, Dan Cook's a great man. His, his church is a great place. Uh, and there's a real move of God there. So if you're in that area, stop in there. Uh, you'll never be disappointed. And then November 10th, we will be at Pastor Don White's church in Mount Orb, Ohio, uh, the living church of Five Mile. And it is alive. We'll be teaching on deliverance and healing. Yeah. Our topic is mind control. And uh, what we'll, we'll talk about is how a lot of your thoughts really aren't your thoughts. And then we base decisions off those thoughts. And our behavior uh, is led by those thoughts, but those thoughts are lies. Even though they may be based off of feeling uh, that's in your body, it still all supersedes from a lie. So there'll be deliverance. There'll be healing as there always is, because God is faithful. Amen. But today I'm going to give you one word, and then I'm going to kind of turn it over to Mr. Jeff and Sister Caroline. I see him looking at me today. I said, I hope you guys got something to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about perseverance. And what's that mean in a Christian's life? Well, the definition of it is to be persistent in doing something. Now, this is where uh, the rest of the definition is so applicable. And this is where a lot of people fall short. Persistent, meaning continuing or being diligent in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Now, it doesn't say that you won't achieve success. It's despite delay in achieving success. And a lot of the times, uh, we as believers, we've lived in such a microwave society for so long, we want everything right now. Yeah. For example, I went through uh, good old McDonald's and got a cup of coffee. <laughs> uh, that's about, you know, all I get from there. And people want to get through the drive through and they want to get through it quick. They want to get through the window and they want their coffee ready to be handed to them. Mm -hmm. They don't want to wait in line. And if they're waiting in line, generally the person always says, hey, uh, what is this person doing in front of me, ordering the whole store? 
my gosh. Uh, but yet they continue to be diligent and they wait mm. and they go through it. But yet we beget this training from an early age. I want what I want and I want it right now. And then when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, and for most Christians, hell comes to breakfast at some point, uh, we have no backbone. Hmm. A lot of them don't. When, and, and I'm not talking, you know, hey, if this don't apply, let it fly, but what area in your life is your backbone weak in? What area in your life do you need to strive for perseverance? What area in your life are you throwing a temper tantrum because God isn't saying no, he's just saying not yet, and you want it, and you want it right now. Now remember, again, it's continuing persistence in doing something, so you're going to continue to strive towards the mark or press towards the mark your higher calling. You're going to continue to be a servant of God. You're going to continue to perform the duties and tasks that the Lord has entrusted you with despite it being difficult Hmm. or a delay in achieving success. In other words, Christianity uh, isn't just some sort of religion that we come to because we are looking for for some handout generally most of us have to be broken yeah and then that's when we really persevere because when we're broken and driven to the end of ourself despite our difficulty and despite and delay and and achieving any success in that life uh, we cry out to the father and we slowly begin to die to ourselves and allow god to put the pieces back together romans 5 says it this way that we glory in tribulations. Do you hear that? Do you hear what I'm saying here? We glory in tribulations. Tribulation is a trial. A trial is something that causes a difficulty in your life. It causes, for lack of a better word, it's a headache. Yeah. But now the Bible tells us to be thankful in all things. So the quickest way to get through your trial is to be grateful and thankful in that time of trials and tribulation because it's a time of refining and a time of testing. Mm. But knowing we have to know that tribulation works patience, patience experience, and experience hope. And hope makes us not ashamed because the love of God is shed our blood in the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. In other words, we have to understand that, hey, after we uh, go through these things, we develop an attitude of gratitude and despite difficulty or delay in achieving success Mm -hmm. because we ultimately know that if God is for us who can be against us no one no no one we're we're not quitting at the first sign of failure Mm -hmm. I'm guilty things don't happen the way I they should happen and then I'm on my knees crying out to Lord Lord but what Lord I need you to supply this I need you to do this what's going on what what's what's happening here But the Bible says that God will supply my every need according to his riches and glory. If I really believe that and trust him, I won't be reminding him of my needs because he already knows. Yeah. And I'll continue to focus on being about my father's business, which is to press towards the mark of a higher calling. It's to seek the Lord in his strength. It's to seek his presence continually. It's to understand that after we have done the will of God, we will receive the promise. What are these promises? Well, what are the promises of God? Well, we could talk about promises all day long. Mm. If I'm for you, who can be against you? Uh, My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Uh, Call upon me and I'll show you great and mighty things. Uh, Behold, he's given us authority. Now, these are all promises, but we also know that his word doesn't come back void. Yes. So when we're, again, we're talking about pressing in, and not folding up like a cheap tent under the pressures of life and trials and tribulations we're talking about persevering Mm -hmm. that's 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 a big thing in people's life is your marriage uh going through a stress and train is your you having problems at your job Mm -hmm. are you not where you want to be or did you uh just come off drugs what is it we we can't quit at the first sign of failure because as long as we fail and we fail forward, we're not failing at all. Do you understand? We're just learning and understanding, hey, this isn't working. Yeah. We learn from our failures. So in essence, it's not a failure. Mm-hmm. 
It's only a failure if we stop mm -hmm. at the first sign of, of a block, a roadblock. And I think somebody once said that uh, it isn't a, a, what is it? It isn't a, uh, a setback isn't a setback. It's a setup for success. Mm -hmm. You know, that isn't a stumbling block in your path. It's a stepping stone to get you over that hurdle. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like that too. But you would never view that stumbling block or that setback as a setup for success or a stepping stone if you don't have an attitude of gratitude and continue to be persevering in your everyday actions with the Father. Go ahead. You got some? Well, I was just going to say that <coughs> it's really about perspective. How are you? Wh mm -hmm. What angle are you looking at this problem from? Yeah. Are you looking at it from God's perspective, or are you looking at it from yours? Mm. And if you're looking at it from yours, there's a really good chance you could be in error. That's no, true. Ain't that the truth? I uh, I lived a lot of, and, and I still struggle sometimes. And I, I'm just being honest. Why? Because it's important to be transparent. If somebody, you know, always tells me, "Hey, I've got it all together." Uh, those are red flags. You know that that generally they don't have it all together, but uh, I'm still learning to get out of my own perspective and trust in God. For example, uh, I was praying for something, uh, and I'd been praying for it, and then I heard somebody said, "Hey, man, uh, God says He'll supply your every need," mm -hmm. and I said, "Yeah," and they said, "Well, do you not think that He knows what you need?" And I said, well, yeah, he knows. And they said, well, do you believe it? I said, well, yeah, I believe it. They said, well, why do you keep asking him for it? And it dawned on me, man, I, I had some doubt. I had some fear Them, that my perspective was off. You know, I was, I was believing a lie. And ultimately what I did is I, I went and I repented. I started speaking life and not death. Uh, and I did some self-deliverance on some spirit of fear. And I had some yawns, uh, and I felt clear-minded. I felt better. I felt lighter afterwards. Uh, but my complete perspective shifted because it wasn't contaminated now. Mm. You know, I, I was standing on the Word. In other words, uh, my perspective now, as Mr. Jeff said, it lined up with God's Word. Yeah, instead of your what you perceived it to be. Well, yeah, I was. I was, I mean... I go back to Smith Wigglesworth, uh, and I've been saying this a lot lately, uh, so it's probably God telling me something. All of me, none of God. Some of me, some of God. None of me, all of God. Uh, so we got to get out of the way of our own self. Mm. You know, when we, when we are out of the way of our self, meaning we remove self and we just become a willing vessel that God can work through, uh, kind of like a, a fiber optic cable sending a signal. You know, he, he's operating through us, and he gives us a message, and he wants to use you yeah. to glorify himself. Uh, we will persevere despite delay because we'll know that, again, God is there. He is there. He is there. That's true. I'm reminded of something that came to me the other day. And this says that remember that when we lose our lives for the sake of Jesus, we find his life. Ooh, Learn to again. fix when remember that when we lose our lives for the sake of Jesus, we will find his life. Learn to fix your focus on the end result and not the struggle. Many times we, like Mr. Jeff mentioned, that we set our eyes upon what reality may seem like. And that is not a real um, picture. It's not a real image. It is what, you know, Satan is painting it to be. And it, 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 a lot an of an illusion. It's an illusion. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. It's an illusion. And a lot of times illusions are used to make us think that that is reality when in fact that our reality stems from the word of Christ. So John chapter 16 verse 33 says that these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. 
In this world, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And funny enough, I was talking to somebody this morning about this exactly, that in the midst of tribulation, it's so easy for us, us to lose our focus off of Jesus. So many times we enter into a state of complaining instead of a state of praising because our situation is making us look like where is God in this? Why am I going through these things? Lord, your word said this and this and this. And instantly we enter a, a state of complaining. And demons love it when people complain. That's, that's what Satan really likes when you complain. The minute you can shift your perspective, shift your, your mindset from a state of praise. When Satan can steal your praise, you are in big trouble. Oh, yeah. When Satan can steal your praise, you are in complete big trouble. But what I like about this verse is that it says that these things Christ has spoken, that we may have perfect peace. So I told this person, if Jesus went through tribulations, what makes you think that you won't? They couldn't answer me. So oh, because it's not the, this is, this is, uh, it's not the lie that most people's been sold. Most mm. people's been sold a bill of goods for Christianity that's false. Hey, just come to the altar and get saved and everything's better. Mm. Oh, your kids will be better. Your husband will be better. Your wife will be better. Dinner will be better. Your laundry will be done. You'll drive a new car. And none of that, that's generally not what happens. You had a whole list there, but really the only thing that is better is you're better. Yeah. 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 That's oh. 100% true. Yeah. That's yeah. 100% true. And it's not a question of if I will face tribulations. It's when I face it. Because Jesus said, you will face it. But be of good cheer and courage. Cause, because he overcame it. That is our guarantee that we indeed will overcome it. So that already is our encouragement that I'm not going to be complaining. If God breathed his breath in me, right? I'm alive today. I am breathing. My body is working. I'm breathing. That means the God who knows the very hair on my head, the God who put breath in me, surely he knows what's happening in this situation. But what I like about that verse is that he says, "Be." he encourages us to have peace. So how do you have peace in the midst of tribulation? Well, Isaiah 26 answers this. It says, Thou, meaning God, will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him because he trusts in him. So you can only have this peace in your tribulation if your mind is stayed on Christ. If your mind is not stayed on Christ, you you're won't have peace. You're in chaos. So that's, again, you see the example of Peter when he was walking on water, right? His mind was stayed on Christ. He had peace. The minute he shifted his eyes, oh, he, he started, started yeah. sinking. He's looking at his kids, yep. looking at his finances, looking, yes. at his, looking at his car, yep. looking at the bills. Yes, what reality was seeming the storms the storms the illusion yeah, he said he could see the wind right I, I don't know about you but i've never <laughs> been able to see the wind i mean i see the movement of it but you can, yeah i've never seen it yeah you know? so so now we see here so god is guaranteeing that we can only have peace if our mind has stayed on him so if my thoughts are racing the entire day of this tribulation that's happening Indeed, that tribulation is going to overcome me and really rail me in and suck me in because my mind is not stayed on Christ. But if I know like the same way when Jesus faced temptation, when Satan said, hey, turn this rock into um, bread, right? Jesus knew that, man, I am the son of God. Man, God said, I'm going to be the king of the universe. He didn't start engaging with the enemy like, wait, man, why don't I have bread? Where are these angels? He didn't give in to that. He stood on the perfect word of God. That is what we also supposed to do. And perseverance is so important because I like this this little phase, and I'll leave it here before Josh takes no, over you know, again. No, good. Keep going. You guys got. I mean, <laughs> shoot, I'm I'm learning here. This is great. One key to overcoming tribulations is persistence. Persistence breaks resistance. Oh, that's good. Say that again. Persistence breaks resistance. 
that's good. And this is in for any part of my life. I'll start with if somebody goes to the gym. They don't start by going to lift up a hundred pounds on the first day. I did right? That. No, you're probably gonna get an injury aren't you <laughs> I, I did <laughs> you'd pull a muscle or you yeah. you do something right because you just went on it but somebody who is who understands that what they are trying to accomplish and they take it step by step right persistence five pounds 10 pounds 15 and so it goes forth and eventually that resistance is broken okay so same thing if i'm struggling in my prayer life I can't give into the struggle and just say, oh, it's never going to work and give up. But me persisting in it, saying, okay, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to set an alarm. Five minutes today, tomorrow, 10 minutes, the next day, 20 minutes. You're you breaking that strength. resistance. Exactly. You're building strength in order to break that that is resisting you. So in order to break that attack from the enemy, to break that thing that's you know, really <laughs> keeping us even in, in the midst of the storm, in a place of 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 being down and being complaining that can only be broken by persistence am i pressing in am i really being yeah but i don't want to press in i just want god to take it from me that's a lot of our prayers is it not i i mean that's 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 the number one thing I, i'm praying for god to take all these problems from me well first you won't let them go uh -huh. and secondly you don't want to do nothing about them yeah let me ask a question to both of you if you are praying this morning, maybe your prayer was, Lord, make me more patient. What's going to happen? You'll come into circumstances where it's going right, to be tested. Right, right. So when I prayed, Lord, make me more patient, because God is faithful, he answered my prayer. It's not necessarily that, oh, patience is just going to fall like a big drop from heaven boom i'm patient in a gift box right in a gift <laughs> box saying hey this is for caroline yeah. patience yeah. open it yeah that's but <laughs> oh. that's what we that's the bill that's of goods not. that we've been sold but what's going to happen is trust me when i walk out of my door and i'm in the grocery line for some reason that day the queue is extra long it's a long line an hour Am I going to be patient? Am I going to do that that I asked for this morning? Because when I prayed, best believe God answered me. So now if I'm able to push, persist, break through that resistance that's trying to resist me being patient, if I'm able to overcome that, I've passed the test. I've now become patient. But if not, guess what? I'm going to run another lap around the mountain. We'll, we'll even avoid it mm. because if we go into a store and we see a long line, oh, I'm yes. going over to Walmart instead of Kroger <laughs> or whatever. Well, that sounds like most people's lives yes. and in their in their problems. Instead mm. of facing the problem and away. dealing with self, we avoid it, compartmentalize it, and then wonder why our kids have issues or we have issues or illnesses later in life. Mm. You know, if you if you're you you packed away the hurt from a bad marriage and you've never faced it, uh you'll have wounds on your soul and we've talked about this before in many many uh lessons here. Uh later on in life it'll eat you alive. You know, you'll be triggered and you'll do these things, but if you just look in the mirror and face it with the perfect God, perfect word of God, which is the perfect law of liberty, the instructions of righteousness, mm -hmm. and we're persistent despite difficulty or opposition, we'll know as we develop the mind of Christ being transformed by the renewing of our mind that perseverance, it's, it's, it's almost an attribute of yes. ours. Because we're not stopping at the first sign of failure. We're pressing in despite little success. But remember, little success is still success. That is so true. That is really true. Um, another thing when we look at perseverance is where does our value lie? Okay? Anytime our values are set on the things of this world, we are always bound to fail. Okay? Yeah. Every time, especially when a storm comes, that storm is going to get you if your value is set on the things of this world. So if we look at Job in the Bible, why was Job Job? Why was he able to persevere? Because firstly, the enemy thought that 
Job's value was in the material things that he was given, right? Yeah, he His thought blessings. he loved God because he had all he these had, blessings. Because he had all these things. So yeah. Satan's like, okay, let me attack that that he valued, right? Even Job, even though Job said, you know, the thing I feared the most came upon me, but we see that Job's value was not in the material things because the minute that was tested, the minute that was stripped away from him, he fell and said, naked I came, naked I will return into my, naked I came from my mother's womb, naked I will return. The Lord gives and the Lord takes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let when me ask you a question, not to interrupt you. I apologize. Uh, but you just said something and it dawned on me. The scripture tells us the thing Job feared the most fell upon me, fell on me, right? That's what Job said. The things he feared, he feared losing the things that he loved him. But yet he still had the fear of the Lord on him, which was the yeah. beginning of wisdom. Exactly. You, you understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. He feared losing these things mm -hmm. at some point in life, and that's why he made all these sacrifices. Yes. His sacrifices, he was operating out of fear. Mm-hmm. Why? And but then you because he that had the fear, fear of the of Lord God, in him. Yes. You see that he had an eternal value. Yes. Because if his value was in the material things, oh the enemy would have definitely destroyed him. When his wife said curse God and die, he would have he would have done that. Yeah. But you see, because of where his value was, when he his mind was set on God, right? He had peace because his mind was set on God, even though his circumstances presented itself in one way he was able to say nah i'm going to stand on the word of god he had made a commitment to surrender to god yes whatever god wanted he was going to do yep and that's why he said even if he slays me yeah i will praise him. i will praise him so Man. how many times are we in that situation where we're able to really rejoice where we are able to praise where we're able to really lift our voice and still see the hand of god because the worst state to be in is in a place of resentment that is so dangerous because many christians don't come back from that place when they have resentment towards god yeah, they Many people fault. actually God leave Christianity this. because they have resentment. They blame God instead of, you know, what Job seeing that example that, hey, I'm going to praise God because guess what? On my good days, on my bad days, when I lose everything, when I have everything, God is still God and he is still worthy to be praised. So we look at another example, the three Hebrew boys, right? I love the story so much. Yep, Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and, Abednego. and Abednego. Yeah. I love it so much because these guys said that, hey, when they were th going to be thrown in the fire, when they were thrown in the fire, they said that, you know, our God will save us. But even if he does not, we are still going to praise him. How many of us really have that m mindset? How many of us really have that perspective to say that on my last breath, on, even if I'm on the last straw, if I've given everything and everything has been stripped away from me, am I still going to see God for who he is? Or is my perspective of God conditional to my situation? Would you make a decision to do that for someone you did not know? Oh. Mm. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. 100% on because I believe in it. Why do I believe in it? Well, you know, the same reason I tell people, you know, things, stupid things that I've done. Mm -hmm. So, one, they'll kind of open up. And, two, uh, they'll see that, hey, learn from my mistakes. Don't don't be a hard head, uh, you know, like, like Brother Josh over here. Uh, but uh, I'm going to be honest with you. No. And when I said that, um, would you do that for someone you did not know? I'm talking about relationship with God. If you don't mm. know God, yeah, oh, then you're not going to respond the same way. You're going to yeah. say, "Don't take away my my cattle exactly. and my yeah. house and all that." You know, he he would be resentful. Mm. Okay, but if you know God and know that God has oh, a purpose wow. for you in the midst of everything, it doesn't matter about everything. Everything, yeah, <laughs> because you know in the end time yes. of it. It's going to turn out well. It is going to turn out well. And that's where you really see, I think, the one of the realizations that I've really come to this year is that, you know, you can take the 
world, there's a song that says, you can have it all, but give me Jesus. Mm. You can have everything, but give me Jesus. Because That's if you take song. everything that, away right? from me and I have Jesus, guess what? I have everything. Yes, you do. I have everything. Leave me alone with Jesus. So you can really take everything, but leave me alone with Jesus. And another way to persevere is always remember what God has done for us. Okay? If God sustained me last year, if God sustained me a month ago, I didn't know two years ago I would be sitting here, but it's because of His mercy and grace. Now, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So if that same God carried me through, why would He fail now? Why would He start failing now? He won't. No. He won't. So at all times, it says that I should always give thanks. I would. I should always rejoice. The next time, this is for someone listening. The next time you are hit with a storm of life, with something that's just unexpected, that just completely put you in a state of, you know, I don't even know what to do. I want to encourage you to rejoice and this next song that we are about to play pay attention to the words pay attention that it doesn't matter our fears it doesn't matter our trials our tribulations none of what we're going through is even worthy or even comes close to who god is what's going on everybody we're back. We are back. Uh, man, what an amazing song. I um, know. I, she I'll, says that even our greatest fears, our greatest trouble is not worthy to be compared to the glory of God. I. Uh, How beautiful is that? It's, it's, it's a great <laughs> song. Man. I don't even know yeah, what to what say. The definition of glory is hmm. <clears throat> the manifested Just, presence of yes. God. Ooh. When you, when you, man, when you can wrap your head around that, you'll stop telling these. I know. <laughs> you, you think these, you got these great big old problems, and you're telling them to mm. this little bitty God. You'll flip that around and start realizing you got these little bitty problems because yes. you're start you're serving a great big old God. I know. You know what I mean? I mean, mm. uh, none of it can be compared to the presence of God. None. Not your biggest trouble. Nothing. It's just I I don't even know what oh, to say. Yeah. No, wow. <laughs> yeah, I was good. I was like, man, I wow. as soon as you turned on, I'm like, man, and, yep. and I'm Be- sitting here looking at these notes. It says uh Romans twelve twelve, rejoice in hope, be mm. patient in tribulation. Mm. Uh another one, Psalms twenty seven fourteen, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Yes. Why should we, why would our heart take courage? Wait on the Lord. Why? Man, because of the glory of God mm-hmm. in our life and moving in and through you. Yeah. It isn't just, as as Mr. Jeff said, because of the manifest presence of him within your life. What's that scripture? Is there anything too hard for God? <laughs> well, uh, Luke 137 says, For nothing, mm-hmm. was the rest of it, shall be impossible mm-hmm. with who? God. God. Ephesians 3.20 tells us that he is able to do what? Exceedingly. Go ahead, finish abundantly, it. Come on, finish above it. Above all that we can think. Tell him again. Ask exceedingly abundantly. Above all. Above we, what? Above all. About huh? Above all. Oh. All. But I can think. That would be Mm-mm. everything, right? Above all that you can think <laughs> or imagine. So even your greatest imagination cannot compare to what God. Man, I got an imagination. Exactly. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> but what's really neat about that is, and also encouraging, and why the Bible puts so much emphasis on us taking courage during these times of tribulations and storms is that because of who God is, because of how sovereign He is, and how self sufficient He is, right? God is not sitting there being surprised about the events that have taken place in your day. Is this making sense? God is not there like, oh my word, that just happened to Josh. Hey guys, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? No. <laughs> he knows exactly. Yeah, if that's God, me. Yeah. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So God well, it's God, already done. It's it, already done. Man, he knows it. He knows the knows end it. 
at the beginning he already knows the end of it he knows how it's going to work and it says that god works everything out for the good of those who love him who have been called according, according to his, his purpose. purpose but you know what's neat is even though he knows it we still have free will mm-hmm. and we can choose to stay there in that spot and get beat up by the enemy mm-hmm. for a second, mm-hmm. a minute, an hour, or a thousand days. Yeah, we can, we can, we have that choice. Yeah, but if we just, if we just, man, we rejoice, surrender, rejoice, and know that persevere. he is really, he is really God. And many times if we look at the problems that we're facing in life, the things, that's why I, that song, the first time I heard it, right, it really brought me to the reality that, oh my word, none of my problems can amount. The moment I, even sometimes when we enter into, you know, worship, worship has nothing to do with us. Nothing to do with us. Worship is all about God's holiness. Man, you okay? Know. This life don't even have nothing, nothing. to do with us, so but, but God and his mercies, and that while we were yet sinners, still died for us. Mm-hmm. So think about this. If I go to God, right, if I'm worshiping, because remember, we have Thanksgiving, we have praise, and we have worship, right? Thanksgiving is all about, you know, what God has done, his goodness, okay? That's why I said enter into his courts with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. Praise is all about God's greatness, but worship is all about God's holiness. So when I go to worship, hey, guess what? My bills don't, in that moment, it's not about my bills. It's not about nothing. It's not about my feelings. It's not about who... um. Auntie Jackie and Aunt Susie and all these people who've hurt me in that moment that it's all about God. Guess what? Because in heaven it even breaks down how the elders cast their crowns singing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. It is all about God's holiness. That's why the Bible says that God is seeking those who will worship him in In spirit spirit and in truth. truth. So think about this. If you're seeking for something, what does that mean? It's rare, right? You only seek for what's rare. You're seeking me. It's, you're, you're trying to find something. Hey, I'm looking for something. I can't find it. So if it's saying that God is seeking those who will worship him in spirit and in truth, that means that it's rare. Yeah, he's searching it out. He's searching, man. Who will really worship me for me? So again, that changes everything again, knowing that God holds my life in his hands. His promises are yes and amen. He works everything out for my good. When I come to him, I'm not going to spend the rest of my life reminding him, hey God, please do this for me. 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 Please do. I'm going to say, Lord, thank you. I'm going to praise him and I'm going to just worship him because let's be, let's be realistic here, right? If God, there's this thing that, there's the song that says, what do we do when the king walks in the room? We worship, okay? So if the king of glory were to come into this room, I, there's no way I'm going to say, hey, Lord, I need my bills paid tomorrow, right? What's the first thing hey, that's going to happen? Can you gonna, fix my kids? Hey, can you fix my kids? <laughs> the first thing that's going to happen is because of his glory, because of who he is, I'm going to fall to my face and worship whether i like it or not you can only really worship him if you are devoted to him Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah what is that relationship like how close Mm -hmm. are you if you're really close your worship is going to be super genuine i mean it's going to be so real from the essence of your person yeah whereas if you don't know him um, you can be easily distracted away from mm. worship and do something else. Well, I can uh, go check what's on TV. Usually, the object of your desire. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, you, and that's and that's what the enemy distracts you with. Yes. Think about if we sit in church. If you ever stood in the back of a church, uh, not every church, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, if you stand in the back of a church and look at people's heads, <laughs> you'll watch them. Yeah. 
kind of fall forward. They'll, they'll get distracted with sleep. They'll start thinking about uh, the grocery, grocery list. <laughs> I mean, think about and the it. the football game the that football starts game. at one. Yeah, they'll st- th- th- that's what it is because, like you said, th- and it isn't that uh, – and for some of them, they do have a close relationship with them, but they're still easy to distracted by the cares of the world. Mm. Mm-hmm. They love the Lord, and they're driving. Some of them, you know, they just don't understand that, hey, uh, there's spirits that's going to distract us. Yeah, to take the focus again. It's all about taking the focus off of God and onto our own things. Think about how many times, you know, we've come into the presence of God, and there's just so many things going on on your mind. So many other things, like we're coming to pray, and it's about Him, yet our mind is racing at 100 miles per hour. We're thinking about all the things we have to do. Even when our day starts, it's already actively running, running, running. Part of the reason that Satan fell is he wanted to be worshipped. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Say oh, that man. again, yeah. Mr. Jeff. I said part of the reason that Satan fell mm-hmm. is that he wanted to be worshipped. He made it about Him. God. And you know yeah. what's sad That's about so scary. That's scary. But this is what's sad about the world is w- the creation is so beautiful. Mm-hmm. But yet friendship with the world and and you know those who worship the enemy worship the world. Mm-hmm. Those who worship Satan they worship the world and the things in it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm not talking about you know the the how beautiful the sky looks or anything like that. But you know the enemy. Uh, he wanted to be worshipped so bad that he became the god of this world. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, yeah, uh, God created all these things, but we're not supposed to worship trees and sunsets and rocks and crystals and any of these things. We're supposed to worship the Father. Yes. It isn't this crystal or this rock or this tree that's going to bring you good energy or ward off evil spirits. It's only the one true God, the living God, mm-hmm. Jesus the Christ the lamb that was slain for the foundation of the world. That's the only thing that is to be our protector and provider. Nowhere in the Bible does it say, hey, worship these things and Mm -hmm. I'll protect you. They'll protect you. Yeah, and you know what the funny thing about that is that even these things that they are worshiping, right? The sun, the moon, the trees. manifesting. Those things. Do you know who those things praise? The Satan. No. So... Let me rephrase it, okay? People come and they worship the mountains, right? Yet the Bible in Psalms tells you that the mountains clap their hands to God. So even these things that we are worshiping, right? It says that the entire creation praises God. Entire creation itself reflects who God is. It reflects His greatness. It says that in his hands are the depths of the places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. He made it. And his hands form the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are his people. And the pasture of his pasture and the sheep of his hands. The day to this day, if you will hear his voice, harden not, not your, your heart. Voice. In as in the provocation yeah. and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. So we are reminded, and I love the book of Psalms so much because it's just a constant reminder how everything points to God and everything was made for Him and to Him and through Him, as the book of Acts says, for His glory. You know... Philippians 3.14, because of these things, Uh we're supposed to press towards the mark, press towards the goal for the prize of our higher calling. We're supposed to strive and press in. We're supposed to persevere, uh, even though we may have difficulty our, our little success in doing these things. Remember, little success is still success, and we come to God just as we are. And if we keep pressing in and we keep persevering, we keep pressing uh, and keep learning who God is, uh, these things that we so easily are distracted by will fall by the wayside. 
and God will begin to take first place and precedence within our lives and we'll worship him Mm -hmm. in our trials and tribulations, knowing that, like we've said earlier, uh, there is no greater. There's no. There is no greater. The manifested presence of God within our lives, we're talking about the Father, Jesus the Christ, Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. We're talking about this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing greater. There's nothing greater. There's nothing greater. Again, your biggest problem (laughs) is not greater. It's not a problem. So It's not a problem. It's not a problem. So will I praise or will I complain? Will I rejoice or will I frown? Will I have faith or will I fear? Because God, the word says that there's this song. I love songs. <laughs> if the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. Never let anything hold your praise. And before Mr. Jeff and Pastor Josh wrap it up here, I'm just so happy to share this with you. Psalm 148 verse 3 says, Praise ye him, sun and moon, praise him. All ye stars of light, praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He hath also established them for ever and ever. He has made a decree which shall come to pass. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons, and all ye deeps, fire and hail, snow and vapor, stormy wind fulfilling his word, mountains and hills, fruitful trees and all the cedars, beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying fowl, kings of the earth and all people, princes and all judges of the earth. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. I, I don't. I mean, you could end the sermon like that, man. <laughs> that was that was just amazing, man. Uh, to me, she made that whole list of things that were there. Yeah. Which is greater to worship, the things mm-hmm. or the one who made them? Yeah, man. The, you because know. even the things are praising the one who made them. Right. <laughs> even they know better. Even they well, know better. Everybody, you know. Oh uh, my word. When I was in the world, I was always trying to cut out the middleman, as they say, and mm-hmm. go to the source because I could get a better deal. Hey, uh, this is what the Father gives us, man. He 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 is the source, yeah. and he he's got a way better deal for you. I mean, but you know, it costed his son his life, and it, it's going to cost you some things, but nothing. I mean, this is this is quantity or quality. I'm sorry, not quantity. He's got the quality, mm-hmm. and I mean, the neat thing about it is, is that your eye have not seen, nor has your ear heard, nor has it entered your heart the things that He's got prepared for you. He loves you. James one twelve tells us, "Blessed is the man who remains steadfast, unmovable, under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life." So right there, again, we, we're going to be tested, uh, which God has promised to those who love him. Galatians 6, 9, let us not grow weary uh, of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Here's these precious promises, this encouragement of God's word. Let us just praise him in the time of, of trials and tribulation. He is the most hope. It is. In our time of need. He is our all in all. What do they say? El Shaddai, the mm-hmm. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the one that was, the one that is, the one Everything. that is to come. He is the all in all, the apple Amen. of your eye, the chocolate we in your chip. We will abandon it all for the sake you know, of the <laughs> I mean, He knows it all. He yeah. sees it all. Beautiful Why not I trust really him? About well, <laughs> Lamentations tells us God this. Is the that steadfast really love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an we end. Are not alone, they are new are every morning. Part of the body of Great Christ, is your faithfulness. Is the Lord is my portion, says my soul. God has given him Therefore, power I will hope in him. Read that right again. Hand oh. of the Father, and we are the body Man, of it's good, isn't it? <laughs> it's good. I'm man. 
that and makes me smile. Chapter the steadfast, eight, three, unmovable, uncompromising, unshakable love of of the Lord for whom never ceases, it never stops, it's mm -hmm. unending. His mercies of his never son, come to an end, they are continual the every day. They are new Moreover, every morning, great, unimaginable is his, is his faithfulness. Mm -hmm. and the Lord, them the Alpha and the Omega, and whom he justified, is my portion. Just that last part, repeat what it again. Shall we the Lord, the Alpha God and the Omega, is my portion. Is my you portion. understand what something son, means when it's our portion, right? Household. Think about when How shall a mom is preparing food for her children. She's yours. giving household. each one their portion, right? They bid that they deserve, but it's saying that the Lord in 35 who shall is separate us our from the love portion. Of God. I got a big appetite, so. They did it say some Child of God, just persecution, little, said the or famine, Lord or nakedness, or peril, our or sword, portion. as it is written, for thy that, sake we were killed all day long. We he are accounted as like. sheep. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he knows. So when he says you're more than conquerors, mm -hmm. it's specifically for designed for you. you. That neither oh. death nor life. <laughs> Angels, <laughs> says my soul, listen, no powers, because of no this, yes. well, anytime we no see the word therefore, it means because of this. Height, mm -hmm. Because of this, because of what is mercies, the fact that he's your portion, his steadfast love, love never ceasing, because of Jesus all these things, Christ, our Lord we and our Savior. So we are not we'll alone him. on oh, this wow. journey as we Amen. run this race. Amen. Amen. Christ Amen. Amen. I, don't, I don't even know what else to say to that. Visit our website, mosthopedeliverance.com. Nor does he ever uh, forsake us. Thanks to Bishop so Todd O'Neill and Janice uh, and Napier. I, I was just I'd sitting like here pray for us uh, today. thanking the Lord, Lord for Jesus, uh, thank running you across them in our lives because, you know, they've networked this whole thing. And meeting Mr. Jeff and the station. And Indeed, uh, Lord, Pastor Don White and Dan Cook, we, it's, it, God is strategically us, doing something. Every person listening I'm, I'm excited today, to see, you know, hey, come, Lord. I'm not saying hold off because I want to see what you're going to do. Come. Purpose, Lord, come fast. You just so but until then, in their lives, man, I'm Lord, eager to see what the Lord has got in store. Amen. 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 We'll see you next week. for them, Lord, is bigger and greater than they can even imagine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. And we pray that you bless each and every listener today. My heart shall in not Jesus' fear. name, my brothers and sisters, I the thank you for listening rise You can visit our website at mosthopedeliverance.com. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after.